early evening on a Friday night. And the big man with a soft drinks pack in each hand looks ever so slightly out of his comfort zone. And you might think, as we thread after him through the wine and beer and cheese at this Fremantle art gallery, that for a football story, we've lost our way. But then we find the O'Connells. One, two, three, four, five, six, and more. Like a pride of very tall tigers. Yeah, I know, I know, it should be lions. And we're safely back centre square with sometime Geelong captain and all-time Claremont legend John O'Connell and his talking pictures. This one I think is Kerry. That's Kerry. They're here tonight. Right, right, right. They're all here tonight. Uh, is that a family group over there? Yeah, that's that's uh, that's with my the old man. With that's the seagulls on their head. Yeah. That's my father right. and my mother and uh, Pam's mother. If the subjects are mostly familial, well, so is the artist, O'Connell's son, Michael, who, like most of the males of the clan, has done his time in Tigerland, in Michael's case also with the Eagles. Still, you'd bet that when it comes to football fame, the big fella, John, leads the family pack. Well, I feel very humbled by it, of course, because, um, you know, I was lucky, because I was probably at the, the top end of it all, but... There are so many people, well, um, playing league at Claremont, AFL, yeah. then in the media where you're under notice and then uh, as coaching and then president of Claremont, all those kind of things, you're visible. But there are so many invisible people putting as much into, as, into football as I've ever put in that don't get the recognition. Well, obviously the theme that he's got is uh, superheroes. Yeah. And there are a couple of his mates. <laughs> You know, you get them along to, to, to put them in the ridiculous outfits and paint them. And uh, I suppose in the hope that they'll buy them. <laughs> but he's, uh, the theme of the whole thing is superheroes. Uh, well, probably, why aren't you there then? <laughs> I must ask him that. <laughs> Well, at least we can correct that omission with a half-time at the footy superhero portrait of John O'Connor. It's been a wonderful uh, ride for me. Yeah, wonderful and high profile. But yeah. I get the feeling you don't really enjoy being in the spotlight. Would that be right? Well, I, no, I don't. I'm, I'm, I, I Do you get, get uncomfortable? A bit, a bit uncomfortable about it, but it's, someone's pretty handy uh, to be recognised. <laughs> for We're <at> restaurants. <laughs> no, that never happens. One of the great club stalwarts on the left there, John O'Connell. Better than any grovelling maitre d' is a singular honour like this. Raising the Tigers' premiership flag at the beginning of the season. Fact is, Claremont and O'Connell live intertwined lives. Claremont had a very strong Metropolitan Juniors team in uh, 1949 and I was still at school and uh, they uh, approached me to have a game with them uh, and I played enough to qualify, three or four games or whatever it was, and we played in the finals and that team went through undefeated. Quite a number of us from that Claremont Metropolitan Juniors team of 1949 came straight into league football at, in 1950 and there was a good handful of us that, that made it. And I was luckier than most because um, I, got, uh, I was in the state team the next year and played state football um, at a fairly tender age, I suppose, by today's standards. And, and then that, that's how it evolved. Hopkins, Joe Franchi and, and myself. And you. Yeah. And, and that evolution, decades in the making, is illustrated on the walls of the O'Connell apartment in South Perth. Football, family, commentary accolades, and high on the list, the move to Victoria. It's the best years of my life, David. The best years, that's pretty... I think that's so. That's a big call. Well, I think so, because we just got married. You see, it all kind of fitted together. In fact, everything's kind of just slotted in as life's gone on. Tell me about walking into Geelong. How did you take to the cats? Uh, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> and this, John? Yeah, that's it. What, everybody, all the captains of Geelong since 1897? Yeah. 
And you're in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Don't look too close, man. <laughs> Just a little bit of you. A little bit there somewhere. Yeah. Um, Another time was in the we made the preliminary final and and I'd played all year, uh, but got a shoulder injury in the, in the ultimate game of the year, which co forced me out of the semi. And uh, having played all year, uh, I thought I'd get a game, but he put me on the bench and I never got on until the last quarter. <laughs> and I had a, a purple patch and kicked three goals. We only went down by a little bit, but that was a great thrill to, be, to participate in a, in a final, uh, particularly a preliminary final, and to think we really got so close. As it happens, there are two gaps in the O'Connell record. The first, not long after the family moved back to Perth. I came back in 1960, Geelong won the Premiership in 1963. Mm. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's the kind of thing that you wonder, uh, had you been there, whether you'd have played in an AFL um, Premiership. I mightn't have, of course, because Polly was over there then and I was a ruckman. But uh, I'd like to think that I would have because I had a pretty good season in 1960. And the second, after leaving the Tigers. Blow me down if Claremont don't win the Premiership in 64. So <laughs> everyone was waiting for me to retire to win a Premiership, David. Football retirement, when it came, would not be lived out of the limelight. O'Connell started as a media commentator. I think I was pretty, I was pretty nasally and pretty ordinary. <laughs> but they kept us on for a number of years. And it was, as I say, another... Thing comparing, it's pretty hard. I think it's like comparing players, isn't it? There's some commentators you like to listen to, and others you can take with a grain of salt. And from radio, moved into the football establishment. It was, he says, baptism by fire. That was the year that the Eagles came in, 1987, and that was the year also that the FDT, Football Development Trust, was founded. And uh, so those were the two new babies, the two two new kids on the block, the waffle was um, somewhat neglected, in my opinion. And I think the general manager at the time would say the same thing. Morale was reasonably low because they could foresee, or what they thought they could foresee was, you know, the demise of the game uh, and so on. And it was pretty hard trying to boost the troops along uh, to keep their morale up and to say, you know, we've still got a bloody good product here. and. Um, uh, you know, we can, we can get this back on track. Capable as he is, it would be a great mistake to assume John O'Connell's successes are down to him alone. Everyone in WA football has surely heard of, or at least heard, his effervescent wife. Time to introduce the wonderful Pam. <laughs> so what do you think of all this, Pam? Oh, look, I'm very proud of him, David. Very, very proud. Yeah, pride's one thing. What do you think of the art? Uh, well, I must say I'm not a really artistic uh, expert. What does that but, mean? But, well, you know, they're John I, is. I John enjoy. Is. Oh, John's <laughs> much better than I am. But then, like that one of the bus stop, I love. Yeah. And I also love the one with the seagulls. Yeah. There are a lot of seagulls on seagulls your. Seagulls everywhere. Yeah. Over there on people's yeah. heads. Yeah. What does it mean? Well, it's the sea. Michael loves the sea, so it's uh, part of the sea dream. <laughs> and Michael's father, quite simply, loves football. This is why. I suppose just it reflects what life's about sometimes, you know. You've got to obey rules and you've got to discipline yourself and you've got to give, make sacrifices and mm. all that kind of business. Sport but does that and, and that's what society needs. When I came to do this interview and reading about you and knowing about you, I thought that, you know, if one day they sort of look at your heart, I thought Claremont would be engraved on it. But I'm just wondering whether Claremont or Geelong would be engraved on your heart. Both. <laughs> I've got two ventricles, haven't I? 